Ah, what is up, MFers? Welcome out to stop number, I need two hands for this goal, seven of the EQ season. So we got nine tournaments, guys. We're two thirds of the way through this thing and um, it's been quite the dang experience. The Elite Series is completely done with their nine tournament schedule um, for the season. And so we still have three left. We have a third of the season left. It seems like we've fished several seasons at this point, but at the same time, it's gone really fast too. But I welcome you guys to what has been deemed the most difficult open of the entire season down here in Tennessee at Watts Bar Lake. We rolled in this morning. You guys saw we've been up ripping lips the last week with the old wizard man. We went back to Omaha. We picked up these sexy little characters, Rebecca, Myra, Osborne. Broccoli just met us down here. We got Coleslaw who's been hunting. He's finally back behind the camera. And... Um, yeah, we're down here getting prepped up, getting some baits tied on, ready to break down this extremely difficult fishery. We are on one of the most famed areas of the entire country for bass fishing. That is the Tennessee River. Unfortunately, we are on probably what is the most difficult fishery um, that at least there's major tournaments on, on the Tennessee River system, and that is Watts Bar Lake. Right below here, we have Chickamauga Lake, which in the past has been extremely good. It's got a little bit tougher. You guys saw us fish a tournament there four or five years ago, me and Zark did. Actually fished right below the dam, caught some giant smallmouth, but we are, um, we're, we're only able to fish on Watts Bar Lake. Look at this lake on the map. It's a good size lake. I mean, it's what, what Brock, 50 miles long-ish? 50, 60 maybe even? It's a real expansive lake. The bottom end of the lake kind of reminds me of a mix between like an Ozark Lake and like a traditional Tennessee River, Chickamauga looking lake, somewhat like Gunnersville, stuff like that, where you have these big creek arms that sprawl out off of that main river channel. And there hasn't been a lot of big tournaments here. There's BFLs here, there's every, every year. Um, MLF was here, the MPFL was here for some major tournaments the last few years. Besides that, you know, the Elite Series has never been here, never been an open here um, in recent years anyways. And um, it's gonna be really interesting. It's gonna be a damn grind. People are saying straight up, it's gonna take 13 to 14, maybe 15 pounds a day to win. And the most exciting thing to me that has me really pumped is that day three of this event, the top 10 guys are on FS1. They're doing live. Um, so live coverage, these last three tournaments, of the open season. So super cool. It's my goal to be on those shows. One of them, two of them, all three of them. Obviously, I'm going to do the absolute best I can to go find the winning pattern, the winning fish for this event. Who knows what's going to happen? You guys know, though, I am 14th in points right now. We need to get up into that top nine, possibly and probably into the top 10 since Kenta Kimura is a freak show and he's on the Elite Series already and he's second in points and he's probably not going to go anywhere. So, the top 10 in points to qualify for the elite series next year. So let me show you guys the lineup of baits I have right here. I got a, just a wide range of offerings from six cents that I'm going to go sling them out there. And I have so much confidence in these baits that that's what I am going to try to really focus on, on a body of water. That's so tough and very, very diverse. You know, there's looking at the lake, it's cleaner um, on the lower end, probably three to five foot visibility, maybe even a little bit more on a good day. And on the upper end, it turns into more of a river system, more stained. Something else that's interesting about this, it's like an Ozark Lake where it's got a lot of the bluffy stuff. It's got a lot of the natural rock. It's got some, some lay down trees and stuff like that. Kind of like one of the, the Southeastern lakes, like a, a South Carolina, a Georgia Highland Reservoir. But it also, it's a Tennessee River Lake, so it's got a lot of the grass too. So we got grass, we got natural rock, we got lay down, standing timber, we got current river fishing, we got man-made structure, whether it be the dam or the NPFL tournament, or no, the, the MLF tournament was one. We got brush piles, and we're at a very, very difficult time of the year, September, where the fish have seen every bait in the books, and they aren't really ready to get into their full-on fall to winter uh, feeding period. So we don't know where the fish are going to be. I told you guys this in the top five September baits video. They could be a whole bunch of different areas and we're going to have to go break it down. Luckily, we got five days to do so. To get things started, like I said, baits that I have a ton of confidence in. If the fish are deep, I got a couple options here that it's going to freaking catch them, whether they're on ledges, they're on brush piles, but mostly these are my two baits I'm going to really focus on if they are out on the ledges. We got a 500 DD and a hair jig, a little prototype hair jig from Six Cents. That thing's gonna be the baddest hair jig on the market. Regardless, these two are gonna get things done for me out there deep. If it's a cleaner area, it doesn't have a lot of brush piles and stuff. Once again, you guys know, 
You gotta throw the swing head with a stroker craw. This guy has just been tied on from when I was up north fishing for smallies. Works equally as well as you've seen all season long for the largemouth. So of course, had to tie that guy on. You might see a little Carolina rig come into play too, or at least be slung around anyways. And then, you know, moving up a little bit shallower, there's a lot of brush piles in this lake. This guy is uh, a bait that's going to get work no matter where it's at. Brush piles, ledges, um, grass, drains, docks. You can do everything with this ridge worm from Six Cents. Got it rigged up on a little free rig so I can fish it in anything. That's important for this, this practice period because I want, I don't take time to switch baits as much as I should, to be honest. I want a bait that I can throw in 87 different types of cover and depths and everything else. That's the guy right freaking there. And then of course, I told you guys in the September baits video, drop shot, can't go wrong with the six inch drop shot worm. Once again, throw it everywhere just as easily. Now we got scope fishing going on too, of course. We always got scope fishing. So we got some jerk bait action going on. We got a little hover jug action going on. I don't know if the fish are gonna be on bait, whether that be out on some of the flats, whether it be on the bridges, whether that be on the tops of the grass. I'm gonna always keep these baits handy in case I see a fish and uh, need to investigate what type of fish it is in practice. Who knows, maybe even catch a couple for you guys in the next few days. And then as far as the grass fishing goes, you guys just saw Zark freaking lay the wood and I, I might've caught a couple smallmouth as well on the old chatter cricket there with the little flush trailer. That guy's gonna get a workout. I actually have a swank tied on in the rod locker right now. So we'll get that guy out as well. Um, if they want more of a swim bait profile, of course we got this whale on the keel weighted swim bait hook. And if the grass is a little bit thicker, we still have this rigged up from up north, we got the old stroker saw and some of a, not a super heavy punch rig, but you know, a one ounce punch weight there that we'll fling in there. And of course, we got some, some glide baits tied up too. Glide baits, top waters, all sorts of different stuff over there. So guys, I don't know what's gonna happen. I got a million rods out. I'm gonna put all of them on the damn front deck and we're gonna go to work and see what happens here. But regardless, we need to be looking for a two and a half pound a two to three pound group of fish or a pattern that's gonna catch those two plus pound fish to really get right in this event. And then after that, it's gonna be getting those four pound bites after that. Kind of like it was at Bugs Island in Virginia earlier this year. That's kind of gonna be the weight range. God, there's been BFLs here that have taken seven pounds this time of year to get a check. So, <laughs> We're gonna need to get bites. I'm gonna try to put myself in position to get the most bites as possible. And then at that point, we're gonna be looking for the better quality ones to kind of supplement those bags each day. Regardless, I'm gonna try to have fun. These next three events are gonna make up the rest of the year. And uh, we have a long ways to go. We could finish 50th in points. We could still win the points. A lot can happen. We've noticed how much one day of fishing can change those point standings um, and really send guys way up the leaderboard, even at this point of the season. So. With that being said, guys, I don't know where my beer went. There it is. To Watts Bar, the seventh event of the season. I'll catch you guys in the morning for practice. Cheers. It's got a blade on it. Yeah. It goes. Blah, 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 blah. Good morning, MFers. Welcome out to practice day one here at Watts Bar. Launched down here by the dam. What a beautiful sight. We actually, me and Zark in that tournament, we fished out of Chickamauga, fished right up by that plant. A lot of it, right on the other side of the dam over there. And I know that dam right there has definitely been a spot that's been in play uh, in past tournaments. So it might be something we're definitely going to check out later or at some point in the tournament uh, practice time. But right now it doesn't look like they're moving any current and the dam is gonna definitely be a, a spot that's gonna be current related. So down here on the lower end, we are going to make a little bit of a run. And this morning I wanna start off fishing some grass areas. This lake's kind of interesting. Like I was telling you guys in that there is, uh, there's a lot of, I don't know, river system-esque 
features of it and one of those is like the Tennessee River is a lot of the grass so we're gonna blast up here a couple miles from this uh, this boat launch here do some scanning on the side scan to see if we can find any fish um, associated with the grass or just grass clumps and then we are going to uh, put the trolling motor down and start fishing that some bitch got some top waters got some jerk bait swim baits tied up ready to fish on that grass and uh, we'll catch the first spot What the hell is this? What did I hook here? A freaking catfish. Wow. Yep. Mmm. Yum. That is some real disgusting lion semen there. That's an all time lion semen, without question. Fishing out from some grass right now. There was a boat in this grass mat that's topped out in the back of this creek. So I didn't go in there, but. I'm out off the grass edge now. Saw some fish on scope, but they were acting weird. I couldn't tell what they were. Apparently there's just random individual catfish swimming about. <laughs> it's gonna be a fun one. is unhealthy. Look at that thing. I'm worried about him. <laughs> Probably a close to three pounder, I guess. So skinny. That's the right kind, though. Skinny jokers. Rich worm eater in some grass out here. Man, no wonder the weights are so low at this place. Built like this. Small one. difference maker right there this guy actually spit up a shad and one that was with him ate the shad we're gonna get out of here as quick as possible but this spots kind of cool because it's at the back of a creek almost the back and it's the last area before the uh, grass line starts and really tops out and from doing some past research I know this is an area where they have a lot of tournaments out of too so Definitely a retread area. He was just out here in the middle with a friend. 
chasing bait. I like that. That's good. Fish Sean bait. Fish Sean. Starting to put it together a little bit. Man, they are not built good though. That is brutal. I don't know if that's a keeper. Should probably figure out what the length limit is, huh? giant <laughs> we're way out here now looking for fish on some baits and they are can't be a bad all excited kind of sort of briefly Let go of my cricket, you dickhead. Unreal. Getting. <laughs> Crazy. Guess everything is out here eating shad, huh? We'll be looking at a pretty good catfish limit. That fish was 20 feet down and 30 feet of water. And he was up by the surface with another one. I don't know what the bass are gonna think about the catfish slime on there, but let's find out. Another good large mouth. Heck yeah. <laughs> Mix them in with the cats, right? Mix them in with the damn catfish. I don't feel too bad about burning them because, well, they're not exactly giant ones. We left that spot we were in earlier. We're just in the mouth of a pocket. It's got a bunch of bait in it now and these guys are just out swimming around. That is a 180 191 bag <laughs> Hey, he'll go pretty well with the four and the three pounder we caught today so far. A damn drum. Hello, folks. Mm. Wrong species again. We'll be having a damn good fish fry. I was keeping these freaking catfish. Day two, made a little run. We're at the dam. Got him. It smells bad up here. Yo, squirt action. There's a leak. There's some Watts bars over there. spot maybe god damn it been spying in my fucking finger you shit me 17 times longer they hold on cole Ooh, it's a keeper too that's it 
We're coming up here. Ah, might not be a keeper. It's pretty close. That's actually built better than some of the ones I was catching, but he ain't a keeper. It's got to be 15. He's 14. Weighs more than some of the 15s I caught. See how thick he is, Cole? That's super fat for here. Wow. Little shallower getting in. I got one on. Spot. Fatty. I don't know if he's 15 though. Can't tell. Pretty close. I'm not gonna stop him from doing that anymore. Fucking hands still. hybrid looking guy too. Looks like he had a little small mouth in him. But he counts as a spot. out of my hand. Angry little spotted guy. Fourteen and a half. Lovely. Liked it. Just had to say it. Just had to say it. All four inches of him. That's a showing up giant here. Dang. Just had to talk some cool. Let's let us get him back in as quick as possible because we need him to bite again during the, the tournament. Wow. Like that. I told you not to bring all these rods. What was special about that dog? track some Megan. Oh, here's a tree. I was just good. <laughs> All right, after two days of practice, it has become quite evident that um, it's extremely difficult as we expected. Only real decent keeper I caught today was on a random dock. Um, besides that, I'm pretty much, even after two days of practice, we're not going to give up looking for new things, but I got my head down on the fish on bait thing because it's the only way I can catch any type of consistent numbers, and it's also, I feel like it's really difficult to find this going on because I keep going into these creeks that they all have bait in them, but they'll, almost all of them have carp and gar and catfish and drum and white bass 
on these bait balls. Very few of them have large mouths, so I lost quite a few of my badass little jig head minnow heads that I use with my perfect hook and the perfect sizes the last few days due to me being lazy and not putting a more than six pound leader on and hooking a lot of really solid sized catfish and get bit off by gar and whatnot so out here pouring a couple more up tomorrow we're going to expand upon this pattern one thing I noticed when we were coming in today they finally started pulling some current because I could see I could tell the top speed on the boat was about two miles an hour slower going back into it and then um, we went by a bunch of channel buoys you could see there's a little bit of current and that was for the first time so that's going to help everything I think really um, obviously it's going to help the fish that are on some of the bluffs some of the ledges main lake type stuff but really current pulling out of all the backwaters when it flushes through the main river system also helps the grass bite the bridge bite helps everything bite and uh, it might actually hurt the bite that I'm preparing for right now, which is fish just randomly out on bait in the back of pockets. But we will make some adjustments as needed, regardless. Pull a couple more of these guys up. Oh, seems like I'm always out here pouring tackle at night. Every tournament never fails. That's why I'm bring it all with me. Perfectly round ish. Alright, first keeper I've landed today. I've actually been hooking quite a few. Found a good little area with some grass clumps that I've been kind of fishing. Some isolated grass clumps. This guy weighs in at a whopping one. 143. Man, what a giant. Always gotta be a boat right behind you. Always. <laughs> Not a bad one. He's probably closer to two pounds. Swim jig fish. All right. Something. What is the keeper? He's skinny. He's long. And he's 15 and a half inches and a pound and a half. We got a bag on. Got a bag of 10 pounder. 10 pounder on, folks. We got a 10 pounder on. Mm -hmm. It's a relentless 10 pounder. He won't give up. I mean, I caught that 10 pounder at Toledo Bend in practice, and I wasn't super surprised by it, but Watts Bar here, this is surprising to get a 10.
You guys ready to see him? I gotta take a picture. Tell all my friends I just wow. caught a 10. Drum 10s. Of course, this guy wouldn't come off in a million years. <laughs> wow. Well, on we go. <laughs> That ain't gonna do it. There isn't a shitter up there, is there? Good morning, Mepfords. Welcome to day five of practice. This is it. We, uh, we got to one o'clock today and got Coleslaw back out with me. Haven't talked much about what's been going on these last few days, but pretty much what we've realized, just plain and simple, is this is about the toughest fishery that I've ever been to and most of us have ever been to. Not only are the fish hard to catch, um, not only is it hard to catch quality fish, but all the fish are extremely skinny and unhealthy to the point where a lot of people think that just getting a limit each day is gonna get you paid. And a lot of those limits uh, are gonna be in that seven to eight pound range because it's gotta be 15 inches to keep, but even the 15 inches here, a lot of them weigh 1.3, 1.4 pounds. They are skinny as a rail. So getting a, a bigger than average bite is gonna go further than any other tournament of the season. I've caught a couple three to four pounders throughout practice, but very, very few. Um, and to be completely honest, when I got here the first day, first day and a half, I really found what I'll probably be fishing the entire tournament, which is not very exciting for a lot of the viewers and whatnot. Uh, it's gonna be fishing some fish that are on bait in some of these pockets for whatever reason that have better quality fish in them. They got keepers instead of 12 to 14 inch fish and um, just twitching that little cricket, twitching my little juggle minnow around on the little jig head. I'll show you kind of some of the stuff later I'm gonna have tied on. But a little bit later on last night, the clouds came in and I was winding a spinner bait and got on some fish low light. So right now we're gonna go blast to some of this beautiful habitat I've found, some hydrilla, some milfoil and stuff, and some little isolated patches behind some of these islands just out of the current on the main lake. See if there's a better quality bite in those. Catch the first spot. Somewhere in a parallel universe, they were bass and not carp. Can't see. That's a smallie, I think. Up there on the rocks. Smallmouth! Here it is. 
first small mouth of practice. It's a begging. They gotta be 18 to keep here to make matters even worse. Wow. He was up on the rocks just hanging out there, so I threw a spinner blade at him and he ate it with his mouth. It's catfish. Catfish. Guy hooked catfish. Oh, just kidding, it's drum. Wow. What? What? Huh? You said you like juggles. What? He likes juggles too, Cole. I need a new juggle personally. My guy's getting a little torn. Watts bar special. That's a good one. I don't know what the hell. It is a large mouth. Wow. We're gonna lock that son bitch up. Dude, that's a giant one here. Blah, yap. Two pounder. Let's see, is he gonna get to two? I don't even gotta measure that one. He's so big, Cole. Better keep him down. Hey, I'm marking this spot and coming back to it. I like this area. It's a marina dock. 176. It was on 176 for a second. Well, let me kill it one more time. 181. Why does it keep doing that? You can't change your bet. 187. Yeah, on him. Shot that. Mm. Yep, that's what old Watson's bar will do to you after several days. Finally cracking open my first beer after these five days of practice. That's a lie, of course. We've been having beers every single night after the headache that is known as Watts Bar. Okay, this place might be the toughest place I've ever been to in the country. Brock, where you at? He's gone. Yep. I think Brock would attest to that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, you, you think about like places in the, around the country like Lake Mead, um, some of the western fisheries maybe, where you, uh, Ohio River, where you have super low weights, and who knows, maybe we're just totally missing the bill, and the people we've all talked to also are, where everyone's struggling to catch five, and when you catch them, they're 1.4 to 1.7 pounders, because they're skinny and look like they're dying, but place is crazy tough to catch a keeper there is four pounders there is three pounders uh we, I, I just don't have any consistent way to catch them so usually i'll be breaking down the map a little bit to tell you guys where to go um i don't really have spots and areas that are that great per se um i have areas that i know i'm going to go to and maybe those are some fish tips that i'll be posting a little bit later on if it pans out like I hope it will. One thing I have figured out, I guess, is that if you get in areas, creeks that have keepers, like some, for some reason you go through like 10 different creeks and it's a dead sea, and then you go through two different creeks out of the 10, and there's 10 to 12 inches. There's just, there's sub keepers. And then you go through another creek, and for some reason in that creek, that area of the lake, there's just some 15 to 17 inch fish. And um, I have one area where I went and I caught some quality fish yesterday, or yesterday, the first day I was here, 
haven't touched it since, um, and it's an area where I think there's going to be some living. There should be, anyways. And I'll tell you more about that, I guess, as the uh, tournament goes on. Hopefully it pans out. That's where we're running first thing in the morning. Boat number 64, I believe it is. So decent boat number. Chance that we'll get to where we want to, at least. And um, whether you like it or not, we're going to be seeing a whole lot of uh, this guy blasting around to fish, chasing bait, solo fish, fishing 8 feet of water, fishing 40 feet of water. We're just going to need to go get a limit. Once we get a limit tomorrow, we can start playing around and trying to get some big ones. But um, I don't know. This one's going to be the ultimate separator. There's a chance that half the guys in the top 10 will catch less than 7 pounds. These guys are all hammers that are ahead of me, and so it's a very good chance that they will all do well because they have all season long. But it's truly the one event where it's very, very easy to catch five to eight pounds um like have a, a day where you catch five to eight and you can get that one four pound bite and it can completely change like your season because kind of like bugs island was but way more the big ones are in there and the weights are gonna be extremely tight the difference i think between like a six or seven pound limit and a nine to ten pound limit might be a hundred places maybe more than a hundred places so that one big bite is going to be all the difference in the world. So I guess we'll just catch five of them, right, Cole? That's five, right. five four-pounders. No problem. We caught one of them already in five days. It'll be easy. We'll catch you guys in the morning. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I think I, I kind of posted this a little bit ago, but we've had to kind of dial it back a little bit on the, the putting out content like I like to because I've been so focused on these damn tournaments, and now we've got another one coming up next week at Lake of the Ozarks. It's our first back-to-back of the season but these last three tournaments so much in them um, with points and everything that um, it, a terrible tough fishery on top of that has made me just not get any work done that I need to but thanks for bearing with us guys and we got three exciting tournaments coming up this one is going to be a grinder and I like that so catch you in the morning